Yeah, uh, today I'm tying a craft first shrimp. It's sort of based in the, the Danish or Scandinavian style sea, sea trout shrimps. Um, but I mean, you can use it for any any species that a fish that likes to eat shrimp, and there are quite a lot of them. Um, I'm hopefully going to be catching some uh, black bream tomorrow on them. So, I'm going to put a size 6 uh, 811S in the vise, TMCO, make sure that's solid, and then I'm going to run on some tan 6 hot, just choose whatever you like, you know, you could tan voles or you, this is uni, but uh, anything will do. Really, and then come and trim away the excess. I'm just going to just come out a bit so that I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm just going to uh, rotate, put a couple of strips of lead in the belly. Um, just fly right through, point down. Uh, but you need to add a bit of weight so you can fish it at a, you know. Like at the speed of an escaping shrimp, without it planing up too much. So I'm just tying in two two lengths of uh, this is point three five lead wire on the underside of the shank. Obviously, if you live somewhere where you don't get to use lead, you'll need to use lead free. Lead's no problem here in Japan. And then take your thread down. Oh, that lead's a bit long, that last bit there. So I'll just come in with my wee nippers. Yeah, that's better. <coughs> So I'll run my thread and I done and so that I'm ready to start the actual tying. Let's make sure the all the leads in the in the gape side. And the first thing to do is to tie in the mouth parts, which I just use some dark tan grizzly marabou. I know some guys like to use um like partridge feathers or, so, or whatever, but as long as it's just slightly darker than the craft fur, and then it's just a wee short bunch, like half the half the shank length or even slightly less. Just, just tie it in on top of the shank. Take three or four turns. Ends were just a bit um, even looking for my like, and then I'll snip this at an angle because you you can start to like build the natural taper um, of your shrimp even from here. I mean, if, if if the the mouth parts are here, this is the head end, which is generally a bit fatter than the the tail. Um, so next I'm going to take some tan craft fur, about a quarter pencil worth. And I'm just going to sort of pull some of the longer fibres out and then realign them roughly with a sort of more medium length. So they've got a sort of slightly more uniform clump. I mean you don't you still want to have the taper in it, but no, not just um, not just as much as the as it comes straight off the hank. So, so a shank length, more or less, to your tie in. And you can just tie that back so it sits sort of nicely on top of the. Top of the mouthpiece. 
you see there. Just tighten it up. And again, I'm going to I'm not I'm going to trim this short. The way species, just to help help encourage the natural taper. And then I'm going to grab some eyes that I've made. Oops. That aren't really the same colour. Mm -hmm. and these are just um acrylic. I just burn the end of the mono and dip it in some acrylic paint. Lay them, lay them to dry overnight on the wheel. Gives you a nice wee eye. Just tie them in one at a time. About just, just beyond the halfway point of the stuff you've tied in for the mouth parts. There's one. And the other. And you don't need to make your own eyes, you could just buy pre-bought ones, but I sort of, I, pref I prefer making my own. And then just trim away the waste pieces at the nylon. At this point, I like to give it a wee touch of head cement just to help secure the eyes sometimes they get they can get pulled out when you're fishing and what have you but the so if you if you just get some cement in there now and let it get soaked in that will sort of help prevent that to a degree again I'm just going to build up So that I've got a, a relatively smooth underbody and I can get a nice even shrimp like sort of shrimp like take it taper in the fly. Uh, next then just want to tie in the antenna which I'm just using a single strand of golden olive uh, crystal splash. I just fold it over the thread and then run it back. I mean, you can use whatever colour you like. Um, I know, you know, you can tie them pearl or you can use pearl or black or whatever. Especially, I mean, if you're changing the colour of the colour of the shrimp, you could tie an olive shrimp, give it black feelers or whatever. I could even use something, something bright like a lime green just to sort of add an extra wee hitting, hitting point, trigger point. So the next stage is to make a dub and loop. No, it's not. Oh, okay. And then tie in the rib. And the rib is just a. Uh, Five pound fluorocarbon on the island doesn't really matter, and I like to sort of tie it and then fold the tag end back like that to stop it pulling out. You know, it can because it, it's quite slick, that just means it's on, it's never going to be able to be pulled out. And then I'm, for the body of this, I'm using some um, hairline hairs. Hairy ice dub and hair's ear colour, like natural hair's ear. You want a reasonable pinch. And before I put it in the loop, so that I got a nice shaggy like, um, representation of legs and what have you, I like to just pull the dubbing through itself a few times to sort of roughly stack it, roughly get it aligned. You don't, It doesn't need to be perfect and you don't really want it to be either. So. Uh, then I'm just going to put this in the loop and sort of cajole it along with my
just between my finger and thumb. You don't you don't need it to be too too heavy, you should sort of be able to see through it. And then just quickly spin it. I'm not even using a, a dubbing twister for this, I just because it's a small small brush and you can just easily roll it between your thumb and four fingers. Take the thread to the front out of the way. And then just wind. Now again, try to try to build some sort of taper at the body. I, I keep the turns quite close together at the at the head end. And then gradually sort of open them up. You've still got good coverage just to get get that sort of natural taper into the body. And then cross your thread, three turns like that, then fold the tag the tag of the loop back. Tidy up and snap it away. Right, because that's solid, it's never going anywhere. And then you're ready to tie in the carapace, which is just a bit more craft for. Similar size bunch to before, maybe a bit, maybe a slightly heavier. Just take it some of the very shortest fibres and then line it up. I like, I like this to be um, sort of like a shank hanging out over the end, so it'll be slightly less. We've got a shank, and, like a shank and three quarters overall. So one shank's going to be across the back, and then the, you'll have three quarters of a shank length sticking out in front of the eyes and what have you. So just set it in. Just one turn or two turns of what is plenty to hold it, and then you can sort of tweak it and pull it to suit. I quite like that. It's all tightened down in it. Three or four tons. I'm just going to throw a quick half hitch, just for security. Um, and then I'm going to rib the nylon. If I can grab it, there we go. And just try and try not to catch too many, um, too much of the dubbing. as you go you can brush it back uh, after the fact then just put four or five resegments segments in getting pro hmm. getting progressively um smaller as you go back so uh, mimicking the taper just make sure that the craft fur doesn't sort of creep creep across the back onto the, the opposite side with the torque of the the rib and then I like to just do like th two or three wraps around at the head and I hold it tight at a slightly backward angle and then tie back across it so that it's tied over a couple of the wraps because again the fluorocarbon is very slick uh, and it will it can it can slip I'll just fold it again and I trim this craft fur button I'll leave it just to sort of represent the tail of the front a quick half a uh, whip finish And then we'll see what we can do with this. So just make any sort of final adjustments. Pull the eyes back a wee bit so they're so they're visible. They, seem, they get a wee bit swamped by the the dubbing brush, but that's not a problem. You can bring them back out. And then sort of 
pull away some of that excess. I like to just come in with uh, my Velcro on the underside and just pull the fibres out in a sort of backwards direction. Down and back. That gives you a nice wee bit of flash into the and then sort of representing the legs quite nicely and the last thing I like to do is just to add a, wee, add a little bit of extra durability and to, uh, to keep the profile um, a bit shrimpier than it might become is I'll just run some head cement along the, the back I just it sort of pins down any, any errant fibres and makes it a bit tougher when it comes to fish's teeth I just think it keeps makes it look that wee bit shrimpier so there's a, there's a craft first shrimp I hope you enjoyed that if you did or if you didn't please uh, leave a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos thanks a lot guys Right.